Sonia Tso, is, she's tried a little bit flying changes, but he's not so sure about it yet, right? So we're going to see what we can do. There are many different exercises. The aids are clear, right? The outer leg is what cues the horse for the lead. Precondition is you have to have a canter that is forward. We need to, have, we need to make sure that the, um, that the canter has enough jump. Enough jump, meaning enough time in the air. The time in the air is when the horse swaps leads from right to left or left to right. So the, the higher the horse jumps, the more time in the air, the easier it is for the flying change to happen because it gives the horse more time. Now, how do you get that, that canter to, to, to be more jumpy? Well, in a dressage horse, of course, we look for horses that have very pure gates. So some horses have naturally a very good canter that already comes with a lot of air time, a lot of jump, and other horses don't. Well, then it's a little bit more challenging, of course, in the training. Can still be done, though. And go ahead and pick up canter, just from the trot. Good there. I want you to try to ride your canter a little bit more forward, just miles per hour more. Yeah? So by pushing him more forward, I get him to jump for now just longer. He makes longer jumps, okay? Eventually I want higher jumps, okay? But let's just get more engagement, more miles per hour in it. Why don't we, why don't we make a whole other exercise out of that? You go, let's say, three steps forward, medium canter on that circle, three steps. Go, 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 and then you bring him back. Slow down. Make sure your outside hand stays down. Okay, that was maybe a little too abrupt, doesn't have to be that much. And again, three steps forward. You can count them. One, two, three, and then slow down. Take a deep breath, wait, and push him forward again. If possible with the legs. Just get organized. That doesn't matter, don't worry about it. Don't, go back to walk, go back to walk. Yeah, so you saw he made two mistakes. He picked up the wrong lead, and then the next time he picked up one lead in the front, the other lead behind. No big deal. <clears throat> no reason to get after him. There you go. And now pat him, praise him. Good. Yeah? If you have four legs, it must be pretty difficult to sort them all out, you know? Okay, now go back to the same exercise. Increase. Tempo, speed up, and slow down. Easy, easy. Soft aids, there. Deep breath, and then go again. Speed up, yeah, a little more. There you go, and then slow down again. Easy, relax, good. Go straight up the long side, push them on. Speed up again, medium canter, couple steps, good, and slow down. <clears throat> Center line. See if you can get a half pass. So push him over, push him over, strong left leg. Good, good, go straight ahead. Want to try it? See if he does it flying. Well, there you go, all right, good. Let him walk. And you told me you had problems with the changes. <laughs> Sometimes surprise attack works really well. <laughs> yeah, the half pass is a really good exercise to set up a flying change, one of many. Uh, because you're in that half pass, you're overemphasizing where your legs are. We were doing a half pass to the right. So legs are here, right leg is forward driving, left leg is back in order to make him go sideways. She was really pushing here. And so he was listening, he's like, oh, I have to go sideways, I have to go sideways, and then she goes straight, and all of a sudden she pushes here, so he's, <clears throat> he's really alert at that moment. So it makes for a good setup. Typically works, but sometimes it doesn't work. Then you have to come up with something different. And um, that's where, as a trainer, you have to have a big bag of tricks, not tricks, but exercises that set your horse up because it's all about balance. If your horse is in balance,